Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus. Indeed, our God is worthy. We praise Him and worship Him. He is holy. We give Him glory. We give Him praise. My name is Prophet Rian. This is 7 o'clock South African time. This is Lighthouse Radio. This is on the Watchtower. To all our listeners, I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus. To all the listeners of Cornerstone, I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord Wherever this word is being heard, wherever this word is being eventually uh, downloaded or listened on, maybe as a podcast, on as audio on demand, may the Lord keep you, may the Lord bless you, may His countenance shine upon you. Like I said, this is Lighthouse Radio, shining the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ, proclaiming the good news, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom of heaven, declaring the truth of God, for the truth, according to John H. shall set you free. No other truth shall so set you free except the truth of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit in John the 16 came to lead and guide us in all truth so that we can indeed be free and liberated in the Spirit when we obey and when we follow the truth of our God. Now this is the Restoring the Altar uh, series that we are currently busy with. Um, you know, we are looking at you know the the apostasy that's currently happening throughout throughout in churches, but at the same time we are looking at how to counter it, how to walk in the ways of God, how to walk in the ways of the kingdom, how to walk as the Holy Spirit leads us. You know, and so far we have dealt extensively. You know, at um, restoring the altar. Um, you know, how to build on the right foundations, uh, being led by the Spirit. You know, really having a, or at least having a relationship with God, abiding in the Lord, hearing what God is saying to us, walking in the truth of God, preaching and teaching and declaring the sound doctrine of our Lord, and of course, staying true to the covenant of God. And tonight, I want to talk a bit about the folly of ignorance, the folly of ignorance. Now, this is something, one there was one early uh, one one uh, morning in the early hours of the morning when the Lord spoke to me about ignorance in the churches and how there is no excuse for ignorance. You know the saying goes that ignorance is bliss, yet with the Lord and with His kingdom such reasoning is merely folly and not wisdom at all. Now in Hosea chapter four verse six, very well Scripture says, "My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge." And it says, because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you as my priest. Because you have ignored the law of your God, and I also will ignore your children. Now, I mean, you know, if you go and read where it says in the CF4, I mean, God did not reject the people because of idolatry, and because, you know, they were engaged in abominable practices. They, God rejected them because they rejected His knowledge, His ways, His kingdom. You know, so... This is a very clear reminder that we need to walk in the truth of God. We need to adhere to it. We need to abide. We need to obey it. We need to be faithful to it. You see, a lack of knowledge speaks of ignorance. And the definition of ignorance, it is a lack of knowledge or information. In Hosea chapter 3, the people were warned that they were being destroyed because they rejected the Lord's knowledge. The Holy Spirit, according to Isaiah 11, is the spirit of wisdom, of knowledge and understanding. So the spirit was poured out to lead and guide us in all truth. Therefore, there is no excuse for ignorance. You see, we are called to walk in God's wisdom and not the wisdom or, or the knowledge of this world. And we must be careful not to interpret the truth according to the wisdom formed or shaped by our own perceptions, ideas and education. And this is exactly what is happening in church today is that we are determining and shaping a form in gospel and doctrine and theology. We are changing it to suit our own needs, to adapt to society. And again, you know what God said in Hosea 4, it says, I reject you because you have rejected my knowledge. Indeed, the wisdom that is from above is first pure and peaceable, gentle and easy to be, to be entreated full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and with the, without hypocrisy. That is according to James 3 verse 17. And take no, note there, it is without hypocrisy. It means there is no hidden agendas, there is no, there is no 
no selfish agendas involved. The truth stands as the truth stands, and it is to glorify, and it is to praise and to worship God. You know, and when the Lord spoke to me in the early hours of the morning, He placed it in my heart that there are things we teach and preach and advocate and proclaim and encourage and embrace as being a truth, or there are truths of the Lord that we oppose merely because we lack understanding and we lack knowledge, therefore we walk in ignorance. And if we fail to walk in the complete truth of God and remain not seeking the right path, therefore not repenting, then we have rejected truth. Therefore, we reject God. The spiritual realm is complex and not everything is at times as clear-cut and simple. The prophets understood the reality of these complexities. Therefore, we need to totally and utterly submit to the Lord for our guidance on the path of truth, lest we do not walk in deception and therefore deceive others. Again, you know, this is not a trivial matter. For if we preach not the entire truth of the gospel, then we are accursed, according to what Paul wrote in Galatians 1 verse 9. And therefore we embrace and teach and preach a curse. Even worse, we can run the risk of mocking and rebelling against him for not walking in his truth. And rebellion, remember, is like the sin of witchcraft. And we are in danger of blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. And so it says in Galatians 6 verse 7, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever a man sows. He will reap. Now what does it say in Mark 3? In Mark 3 it says, I'm reading out of the New King James Version, verse 28. Assuredly I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the sons of men, and whatever blasphemes they may utter. But he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is subject to eternal condemnation, because they said, he has an unclean spirit. You see, to blaspheme the Holy Spirit is to demonize the work of the Holy Spirit or to call the work of the Spirit unclean or even the work of man. So today in churches there is still great ignorance regarding the move and the work of the Holy Spirit. And because of our ignorance, despite our best intentions, we can blaspheme even, even against the Spirit of the Lord. And you know, we blaspheme against the, the Spirit of the Lord when we reject the truth as as what the Holy Spirit comes to reveal and to, to teach us and to show us. Remember again, John 16, the Holy Spirit has come to lead and guide us in all truth. So when we reject that truth, then we ultimately reject the Holy Spirit. When we twist it, when we distort it, we reject the move of the Holy Spirit and we blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. You know, one clear example of uh, ignorance is, for example, tongues. Uh, I'm not talking about the gift by the heavenly languages, the earthly languages, but I'm talking about, about your prayer language. I'm talking about the prayer language that comes by, you know, as the Holy Spirit speaks through you. So I am talking about the heavenly kind. Now, right now in churches that is being, you know, speaking in tongues, it is being branded and regarded as being demonic and it is called a profane fire. Again, you know, well, for me, if millions of people are speaking in tongues, then they must all be de demonized according to this to this uh, point of view. And yes, I do agree. Some people are just babbling. Some people are pretending they can speak in tongues. But the reality is, you know, uh, this is a natural part and parcel of being filled by the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit speaking through you. It is not you speaking. It is the Holy Spirit using your vocal cords to speak. So, you know, we need to understand, you know, that there are the arguments that the Lord never spoke in tongues. Uh, yet, we do not even know this. And we point out that tongues are only speaking in other dialects and early languages, which is also true. But like I said, in our ignorance, we now claim that this is all demonic or a work of the flesh. You see, this is but all ignorance, and so we grieve the Holy Spirit in our ignorance, and even blaspheme against the Spirit of the living Lord. You know, so I keep on coming back to that chapter, to that scripture out of Hosea 4, where the Lord says, you know, my people perish because of a lack of knowledge, but he says, because they have rejected the knowledge. So, you know, if we reject the knowledge of God, and like I said, this is exactly what's happening in churches today. We reject the knowledge of God. We reject His truth. 
we reject the truth, the absolute truth of God. You know, we, we, we add a personal twist to it. We try to distort it, manipulate it, to fit into our world, into our way of thinking, into our perceptions, into our culture, into our society. We do so not to offend people. But at the end of the day, all that you're doing is you're offending God and you're mocking God. And, you know, that you're blaspheming the Holy Spirit because you're rejecting the truth that He is leading us in. So, you know, all of this comes down to, all, to the work of the Holy Spirit. All the ways of God, all the ways of the kingdom. You know, in our lack of understanding, we make erroneous statements and claims, even supporting such claims through misinterpreting scriptures. Reality is that there is great but great danger in ignorance, and ignorance comes from a lack of wisdom and knowledge from God that accumulates into true understanding. And so God is warning the church against being ignorant, for sometimes our arrogance and pride also fuel such ignorance. After all, we would love to be right, but to be right doesn't always mean we are walking in the truth. This is the time more than ever of Galatians 6 verse 4, which says, but that each one examine his own work and that he will rejoice. Sorry, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not another. Then it says in verse 5, For each one shall bear his own load. Indeed, we need to make sure in our walk with God that we do not walk in ignorance. We need to examine our own work. We need to examine what we are teaching, preaching, advocating, embracing. Is it what is right to us, but is it the truth of God? Are we truly walking in the truth of God or are we walking in our own truth? And if you're walking in your own truth, which is opposed to God's truth, then you fall into, into the great danger of rejecting God's knowledge. Therefore, you are rejecting God. It says in the following in Job 36, it says, verse 5, Behold, God is mighty, but despises no one. He is mighty in strength of understanding. He does not preserve the life of the wicked, but gives justice to the oppressed. He does not withdraw his eyes from the righteous, but they are on the throne with the kings. For he has seated them forever, and they are exalted. And if they, were, and if they are bound in fetters, held in a cause of affliction, then he tells them their work and their transgressions, that they have acted defiantly. It says in verse 10, He also opens their ear to, to instruction, and commands that they turn from iniquity. And if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. And it says in verse 12, But if they do not obey, they shall perish by the sword, and they shall die without knowledge. So it is made clear in Job 36, 36 that a lack of knowledge does lead to our demise, and such ignorance comes from a lack of obeying God. Jesus said that if we love him, we shall obey him, and he has called us according to the Great Commission to proclaim all that he has taught. By the way, when it comes to Job, remember Job's friends came to him and gave him all kinds of ill advice. All ill advice. This is because they were ignorant to the truth and the spirituality of things. They were not filled with understanding. They could not discern. So they, they, they actually mis, misled Job. And that's the danger of ignorance. God had a plan. God had a purpose with it all. But they lacked insight, they lacked understanding and the wisdom of God, which is pure, which is without hypocrisy. Yet they tried to, to lead Job away from the truth and all their foolishness and all their lack of knowledge and understanding. So that is very important to understand. There is danger to our ignorance. The Lord is very serious that we need to start walking in wisdom in true knowledge and understanding, lest we fall into the pit and trap of ignorance. Proverbs 5 verse 22 says, The iniquities of the wicked ensnare him, and he is held fast in the cords of his sin. He dies for lack of discipline, and because of his great folly he is led astray. Indeed, our ignorance shall lead us astray if we wish to remain f folly. If we remain walking the path of folly, therefore ignorance. You see, such ignorance will ensnare us and bring about spiritual confusion. Remember what it says in Psalm 1, 
Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. And then he says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. You see, if we remain in the Lord and in his word, led by the Spirit, we shall then surely not be led astray down the path of ignorance folly. Therefore we will not walk down a path of great danger, deceiving ourselves, deceiving others. Isaiah 56 verse 9 says, All ye beasts of the earth, come to devour. All ye beasts of the forest, his watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant, they are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yes, they are greedy dogs, which never have enough. And they are shepherds who cannot understand. They all look to their own way, every one for his own gain. You know, of the 39 kings who ruled the northern and southern kingdoms of Israel after Solomon, only five did what was right in the eyes of God. So here Isaiah makes it clear that the leaders of Israel, the kings and even the priests, are ignorant, sleeping, slumbering, and seeking their own gain. So they do not understand which speaks of ignorance. We must guard against ignorance. We must guard against pride and arrogance, seeking to twist God's truth for our own gain or profit. You see, we cannot merely advocate a truth for our own agenda if we are not sure of such a truth. This is dangerous. Isaiah warned the leaders that they were sleeping, lying down and loving to slumber. Remember what it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, which is in context of the day of the Lord. And he says that we must not continue in our ignorance or arrogance. For indeed the day of the Lord is far closer than it was 2,000 years ago. So, you know, when Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians 5, when he spoke about the coming of the Lord, you, may, you have to consider that this was 2,000 years, almost 2,000 years ago that he wrote it. Now we are far closer to the coming of the Lord. But it seems that in this time period, our ignorance, our lack of knowledge and discernment and understanding and wisdom has depreciated. It seems that we, that we are no longer walking in the, in, the, in the knowledge and the truth of God. You know, in that same chapter of, from verse 4 we read, But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness, therefore let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, are, get drunk at night. Verse 5, But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet the help of salvation. And that, of course, you know, again refers back to Ephesians 6 about the armor of God. So Paul urges us to keep walking as children of light, to be sober, to be alert. This, is, of course, all speaks of our spiritual condition where we need to be ready for the Lord's coming. This also implies that we must strive towards holiness and grow in the knowledge and understanding of the Lord. You see, there is basically no more time to be ignorant or to act ignorant, or even plead ignorance. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 13 says, Although I was formerly a blasphemer, this is what Paul writes, a, pers a, a, a persecutor, an insolent man, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly and unbelief. Yes, so Paul was ignorant, but it was because he was an unbeliever. It's important to understand. Surely, therefore, a child of God who is supposed to walk in spirit and truth must and should not be ignorant or walk in spiritual darkness. You know, you need to, to realize that when Paul was walking on, 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 on the road to Damascus, when he met God, he was not yet a believer. He was not yet a follower of Christ. So he was on the way to Damascus as a man who was walking in the folly of ignorance. He was therefore on the path of great danger. And this is what we need to understand for 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 13. He says, I was an insolent man. I was a blasphemer. A blasphemer, right? Remember, now we're getting back again to what it says, you know, blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. We're connecting that back to Isaiah chapter 4 to John 16, 
When you reject the knowledge of God, therefore you reject the Holy Spirit who has come to lead us in all truth. That's exactly what Paul did. But he, he pleaded his case, but I was an unbeliever. But as a child of God, we are supposed to walk in spirit and truth. And we must surely not be so ignorant or walk in spiritual darkness. There is no more excuse when we come to the Lord. There is no more excuse when we seek the Lord. There is no more excuse when we abide in the Lord, when we are baptized in the Spirit. There is no more excuse to be ignorant. It is that simple. We need to walk in the ways of God, and we need to what, listen to what God says. Now, remember what it says in, in, in Hebrews 6, chapter 6. It says, Therefore, leaving the, the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, and of faith towards God, of the doctrine of baptisms, of laying on of hands, of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened. Remember, listen what what is written here. It is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good work, the word of God and the powers of the age to come if they fall away. To renew them again to repentance since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame. So, you know, this will be like Paul going to Damascus, walking in ignorance, meeting God, being blinded, being woken up from his spiritual blindness, from his spiritual ignorance and his folly. And then eventually, you know, Paul going on to, to lead the Gentiles back to Christ. And then it will, you know, Hebrews 6 speaks about, you know, imagine what, what would happen if Paul decided, you know, he was no longer going to be following God and he's going to become an heathen again. And this is what it says, you know, that, that it's almost impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift you know, to to really come back to God. If if we if, if we truly have found God and we walk with God and we know the Holy Spirit and we walk in spirit and truth, then there is no reason, there is no excuse for our ignorance. Because the Holy Spirit has come to lead us in all truth. And the problem therefore is if we are not led in the in the truth of God, then that places question marks, you know, behind our relationship with God. Are we truly baptized in the Spirit? Are we truly led by the Spirit? Because if we are truly led by the Spirit of God, then we will be led by the truth of God, therefore by the wisdom and the discernment of Isaiah 11, the counsel of God, and therefore we will not walk in the counsel of God, and we will not be speaking and teaching the gospel which is contrary to the truth of Jesus, and therefore we will not be accursed. You know, People, uh, Peter, in his in the first epistle, he writes from in, in in the following, in the first chapter, he writes from verse three: "Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to His abundant mercy, has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation." ready to be revealed in the last time. And it says in verse 6, In this you greatly rejoice, thou now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, thou it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Who may have not seen you love, whom having not seen your love, thou now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy, inexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Now, we also read in 2 Peter chapter 1, it says from verse 5, But also for this very reason, giving all diligence add to your faith, virtue to faith, virtue and knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, we are not talking about the knowledge of God, the, the, the discernment, the counsel, the wisdom of God, not to walk in the dangers of the folly of ignorance. Here it says that if we 
that if we pursue these virtues of, of knowledge and, and self-control and perseverance and godliness and kindness and love, then it says that we will not be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus. Then it says in verse 9, For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure, for if you do these things you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly in everlasting kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul writes in Ephesians 5 from verse 15, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So therefore more than ever we as children of God, we need to seek the Lord, and we need to cry out for wisdom, and we need to walk in discernment and knowledge. You know, uh, on this same program on a Monday night, we, we spoke um, in, in depth about, you know, Deuteronomy 28, which speaks about the curse of the bewilderment of heart, of, 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 of madness and blindness. And that speaks about, you know, when we drift away from God, from God's truth, from God's ways, then we become spiritually not of sound of mind. We become spiritually blind, therefore lack, we lack discernment. And it speaks that we become, our heart becomes, it, it reaches a state of unrest, full of anxiety and fear. And of course, I mean, if you go and read what, it, what, what Paul, what Peter wrote in 2 Peter 1, what I just read, um, that he says, you know, that for he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness. So the, the remedy to, to all of this is 2 Peter 1. The remedy to, to all of, you know, to walk in the ways of God, to walk in, in, in the, the fruitfulness of the knowledge of God, in the counsel of God, in the wisdom of God, is to really abide in God. To seek Him, to seek His will, to seek His way, to be led by the Spirit, so that we do not become spiritually blind, bewildered at heart, or spiritually mad, as the Scripture says. So this is why I said, you know, ignorance holds great danger, for only the truth of the Lord sets us free. Ignorance breeds religion, traditionalism, and legalisms. Ignorance enslaves and ensnares. Paul writes of the spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians 12, and he says the following in verse 1, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You see, Paul wants the believer to fully grasp and understand the work of the Holy Spirit. He does not want us to walk in ignorance. He wants us to be equipped by such knowledge and understanding so that we are not ignorant. Believers, we can no longer be ignorant. It is time for us to mature and to grow in maturity, therefore in knowledge and wisdom. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 37 says, If anyone thinks himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things which are right to you are the commandments of the Lord. But if anyone is ignorant, let him be ignorant. So his words echo what the Lord said in Revelation 22 verse 11. It says, He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. You see, the time is upon us to choose. Choose to serve God in fullness, and in the knowledge of God, therefore not being led astray by ignorance. Or we will choose the path of ignorance and go astray and lead others astray. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10, Now whom you forgive anything, I also forgive. For indeed I have forgiven anything, I have forgiven that one for you, for, for your sakes in the presence of Christ. Lest Satan should take advantage of you, of us, sorry, for we are not ignorant of his devices. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the, enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. You see, again, we find the call to be sober and to be alert. We as believers, we need to be alert spiritually, therefore awake to the schemes of the devil. And such schemes include introduction, um, you know, uh, deceptions, introduction to, to, to deception, heresy, strife, confusion, falseness, idolatry, and a pseudo-religion 
within the body of Christ. So we need to really discern. We need to open our eyes. We need to be sober to what is the counterfeit, to the counterfeit altars. To be sober and to be alert is truly a call of, of walking in discernment which comes by wisdom, therefore not being ignorant. You see, only when we abide in the Lord and when we seek His wisdom and knowledge can we become wise to the plans of the devil and to counter it. We need to be alert, therefore not ignorant. We need to be alert of the devil's schemes and strategies as we live in a world of New Age teachings, humanism, secularism, the occult paganism and esoteric teachings. We need to be alert to how the devil has slipped into the church by introduction, sorry, by introducing a gospel which is false and dangerous. And this is why I said this is a pseudo-religion, a false, a counterfeit truth. Again, what Paul wrote in Galatians 1, if you preach anything which is not the truth of Jesus, you are accursed. You know, we think back to the days of Gnosticism, to our modern day of prosperity teachings, the word and faith movement, Jesus' only doctrine, and so much more. Yet if we walk in ignorance, how then can we guard against being not ignorant of the ways of the devil or his devices? We need wisdom. 1 Timothy chapter 4, what Paul writes, it says, Now the Spirit expressly say that in the latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines, of demons. And he says in verse 2, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving. 2 Peter 2, we read, but there were also false prophets amongst the people, even as there will be false teachers among you who will, be, will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even to denying the Lord who brought them and bring on themselves swift destruction. And then it says in verse 2 in the same chapter, And many will follow their destructive ways, because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. Again, we get the whole theme about blaspheming. And many will follow their destructive ways. Now, it is very interesting if you go and read, it says many will follow their destructive ways. What did Jesus teach us about the two paths? When he taught about the broad and the narrow road, he said, Oh, the narrow road, few will walk in it. Yet it says in 2 Peter 2, Yet those who are the false teachers who present a destructive path of them, it says, many will follow in that path. So what Paul Peter writes, it supports what Jesus said. And this is the reality today, that many will not follow the path of Jesus, but will follow the path of ignorance. You know, we need to consider the book of Jude, and there, then we realize this is a day and a time where ignorance has no place in the heart or the mind of any believer. We need to be sober, alert, and seek the Lord to walk in His truth all the time. And then at the same time, not be in danger of rebelling against God by rejoicing by, sorry, by rejecting his truth, by exchanging it with her own version of the truth. And of course, you can go and read Romans 8, which speaks about the judgment of those who reject God's truth. You see, the reality is that one fears that the church is caught up in all kinds of apostasy, deceptions, idolatry, strife and spiritual idolatry, simply because we remain ignorant in our ways and therefore remain oblivious and ignorant to how the devil has come to steal, to destroy and to kill right in the midst of the church. For the influence of the devil that has caught that it has caught the church of God sorry, for the influence of the devil has caught the church of God because of ignorance. And that ignorance has resulted in two Timothy two and I read from verse twenty three it says But have nothing to do with foolish and ignorant speculations, since you know that they produce strife and give birth to quarrels. So that's what Paul writes. We need to guard against ignorance, and we can only do so when we have nothing to do with foolish and ignorant speculations. And the Amplified, it says, useless 
over unedifying stupid controversies. So we need to really keep God of ignorance. God our heart, God our mind. Yes, in our ignorance we have allowed division and strife to, to tear the church apart. We have allowed for idolatry and apostasy to cripple the church because we remain ignorant to the truth, to the spiritual realm, to the kingdom of God, and yes, the ways of the devil. It is time to wake up and to rise from our slumber to know what truth is and to proclaim such a truth. For the truth of the Lord sets us free according to John 8. And so we are again reminded of John Corinthians chapter 15 verse 34 it says, Be sober minded, be sensible, wake up from your spiritual stupor as you ought. And stop sinning, it says, for some of you have no knowledge of God. You are disgracefully ignorant of Him and ignore His truth. I'm reading out of the Amplified Lear. So again, that all connects with knowledge. It connects with Ignoring the truth of God. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, Finally, believers, we ask and admonish you in the Lord Jesus that you follow the instruction that you receive from us about how you ought to walk and please God, and that you excel even more and more, pursuing a life of purpose and living in a way that expresses gratitude to God for your salvation. And then it says, For you know what, what commandments and precepts we gave you by the authority of Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, that you be sanctified, separated, and set apart from sin, that you abstain and back away from sexual immorality. So here Paul is again speaking about, you know, following in the ways of the Lord. In that case, it was Paul reminding the believers that that the first disciples they walked with Jesus and that's what they taught, that's what they preached, the, the gospel of the kingdom. They were not walking in ignorance. And it's so important that we remain on the path of God. The question is, do we truly know the way of God or are we still ignorant of His will? Do we truly know His truth and can we truly seek His kingdom and His righteousness above all else? You see, it is indeed it's time to be set apart, sanctified from this world and from ignorance, so that we may walk in His glory and to the glory of our God. You know, it says in Ephesians 3 verse 8, To me, who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ, verse 10 says, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and the powers in the heavenly places, according to the eternal purposes which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, it is so important that we return to it all, to we return to the foundation of our faith, which is Jesus Christ. To preach, to teach, to proclaim the manifold wisdom of God, which was made known to the church, which was revealed in the person of Jesus Christ himself. You see, we need to walk as a people who understands the reality of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, where it says, verse 4, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Therefore Paul is speaking here about taking captive, casting down all ignorance, because it is folly to walk in such ignorance. Ignorance opposes the ways of God. It leads his people astray. For, it, in, in, for ignorance is mere foolishness. Indeed, we must walk sober and alert in the fullness of God, so that in His truth and wisdom we may rise against all things counterfeit and everything that exalts itself up against the kingdom of God. And we can only do so in the wisdom and counsel of God, and certainly not when we walk in ignorance and plead ignorance. 
This has been Lighthouse Radio. This is on the Watchtower. My name is Prophet Rian. Thank you for listening. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord bless you. Remember to go and visit the website www.lighthouseradio.co.za. Seek the Lord, walk in the Lord, abide in the Lord, so that you can walk in the counsel and the wisdom and the knowledge and the might of God and not in ignorance. Um, I play out with Down the Mountain. This is from the Stoneleigh Band. May the Lord keep you in this week and may He be with you.